loss of the loss of the loss of the loss of the loss of podcast. The loss of podcast. Hey, sexy friend. He's making me his bitch. Maybe you want to get a piece of that. Pretty good. I want to talk about sexy teens. I was getting erections. It's a very creepy feeling. I can guarantee that underwear theft will come up again. None of this is relevant. Pokemon, Pokeballs. 750 milliliter bottle of rum. Welcome to the Velocity Podcast. A study in monology. This is your grumpy uncle Peter. He will say words at you. One of my favorite Greek, I think it's Greek. I don't know. I only know the story. I don't know where it camp comes from. I think it's Greek. Most of these stories are. I think the name is Phoebe. Maybe it's Persephone. But it might just be Phoebe. The story is that Phoebe, as a gift, was given the ability to predict the future, see the future with accuracy, and be able to like predict what people are going to do and stuff. But then one of the gods, probably a goddess, got annoyed at her, probably for being good looking, because there's a lot of jealousy in these stories. And then added to the blessing, you can see the future, the curse, but no one will believe you. And I really enjoy the subtle irony. There's a lot of irony in these little stories. Uh, There's a lot of twisting the blade, which is very good narrative skill and ability. So that's something I appreciate. So basically, this lady would come up and she'd be like, you know, you should not invade this country. You should not join the military. You should not go to this house for dinner. And then people would be like, well, I'm going to join the military. I'm going to go to this house for dinner. I'm going to do all the things I want to do. And there would be tragedy. And she was just, just torn apart because she was trying to help people, but no one would listen to her. And she was always right. And the fact that she was always right was irrelevant. People still just didn't listen to her. That was the curse. And I, I've always found that pleasant. Except it makes it very clear that there is no free will in the universe, in existence at all. Now, I recently had an experience. And I had been down in a bad mood for about a week. And last week I went to the doctor. And one, one of, Basically, the only thing that happens when I go to the doctor is like a checkup. So they take some blood. And they, and they tell me uh, what's going on inside my body, which is interesting because I get regular updates as to what's happening in my body, which, you know, normal people don't get. Uh, I'm basically okay, by the way. So I went into the doctor's office. So they, they have to, like, check the blood, and then I go in. And he didn't look at me, and he looked at the chart, and he goes, you've been working out? I was like, well, you didn't look at me, so it's not like I have put a more impressive presence in the room. So clearly it's something to do with my blood. I was like, yeah, I've been trying to do chin-ups and stuff. I haven't been able to do judo, so it's, it's been tough. But, you know, kind of humming and hawing my way through that. He goes, okay. I was like, no, you can't, you can't just say something. A doctor cannot say something pointed and then just move on if it's not an issue. I also should have said, no, I haven't been, and then see what he says. I guess that would be actually be the answer. He's like, oh, because then this happens. So I go, no, no, why did you say that? He goes, oh, well, just your creatine levels are quite high. So when he showed me my blood work, uh, the creatine, it had an H next to it. That's how you know it's high. Uh, I don't think you actually need to be a doctor to figure that one out. But anyways, and I looked at the previous times I've been to the doctor because it actually puts about five, six columns so you can compare your previous blood test to your current blood test. And yeah, my creatine was like pretty high and I had been working out harder. I can't say hard compared to how I used to work out. This is not hard at all. It's not even like a question. I basically used to do judo for like two, three hours and I would be unable to exercise for a couple of days because it was so hard. I had such a, such a beating. So then I went home and so because he mentioned creatine specifically, I was like, well, I don't know why. I don't really know anything about creatine. I know like weightlifters and stuff take creatine. They're supposed to give them that extra, they get one more out because of it. So I went online, I looked up, what are the, what are the emotional effects of creatine? Because I started to put something together. And it said creatine can produce uh, depression and mania. So mania, I think in this case, is when you're super happy and super sad, super happy, so you just go up and down really fast. 
you basically have no control over your emotions. But I've been in a bad mood consistently, and this fit with the uh, depression that came from the creatine, which related exactly to something I'd said earlier to a coworker, is that we don't have feelings. We have chemicals in our brain. Now, maybe something happens and our body produces the chemical, but at the end of the day, we are just chemical reactions, which goes in line with we have no free will. Because an advanced enough computer could model the chemical reactions in your brain, therefore predicting your feelings, your mood, and uh, what events and stressors cause what chemical reactions in you, and then be able to then very quickly be able to predict how you react to things, therefore building a model on which to predict your behavior and accurately predicting everything that happens to you in your life from that point onward. And if the computer got, you know, complicated enough, advanced enough, it could take in other people and then the cross interactions of those and how they affect each other and what happens. Uh, then you now could model out what's going to happen to all of society in the world forever and predict the end of the world. You could predict, you know, what's going to happen in a thousand years, all that kind of stuff. Because we don't have free will. But then, since it's predictive, we end up with the Tom Cruise movie. Oh, no, this was kind of the premise, and I can't remember the name of the movie. Minority Report. In Minority Report, you get arrested for crimes before you commit them because of a, a predictive algorithm. It's actually like, I think in that movie, it's like psychics or something in baths, which is a pretty science fiction-y thing. But like, if you actually think about it, the way I'm talking about it, if you had blood work and then could actually monitor people just if they had their phones with them all the time, off you go. You could create your models, and from your models, you could just say, oh, Peter is going to kill this guy next week. We should arrest him now. If we arrest him now, everything's going to work out. So I realized, again, this, this brings us back to there's actually no free will. Free will does not exist. Everything is predetermined in a way. We just don't understand the predetermination. Therefore, we think we have free will, when in fact, we're just having chemical reactions. So how do we attain free will is actually the question. How do we claw back the ability to control our own lives from this future? And it's actually really simple because as long as we don't know the predetermined nature, we do have the option of choice or the illusion of choice, but then our brains will accept that that choice exists and therefore we live in a world under free will even though it doesn't exist. So the solution is quite simply to kill Tom Cruise. If we kill Tom Cruise, he will never be able to arrest us for crimes we haven't yet committed. Therefore, maintaining the illusion that free will exists. But it doesn't. Because you're just chemicals. And so if you're annoyed by what I just said, that's just a chemical in your brain. You're not actually annoyed. If you found it vaguely amusing, you're not actually vaguely amused. It's just a chemical in your brain. Uh, if I'm depressed next week, and maybe it's because I'm working out again and my creatine levels have shot up. I actually didn't look into what the solution to that is, though. Because there should be either another chemical I can kind of try to get to happen in my body, or my weird instinct is I'm going to work out so hard that that creatine then becomes the baseline and my mood adjusts to it naturally. So that this much creatine in my body is my mood, like a normal mood. And I would need even more creatine to have the uh, depression or mania. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work. I am going to try to work out harder, though, because I'm, I'm just getting myself back in shape. I was hoping to go back to judo, but uh, coronavirus is not gone. Omicron. Since we're talking science fiction, that is a science fiction-y name. And I really wish scientists would kind of like not name it something kind of cool sounding. It's the Greek um, alphabet but it, it doesn't matter man it's omicron is a great name for a fictional disease that ruins the world so i had a couple of stories to kind of round this out uh 
and one of them I was incredibly interested in. So this is from Twitter, and it is about how Instagram has created a new feature for their phone. The other feature is something that we call Rate Shake. Okay, first, let's just stop right there. Uh, I am an amateur podcaster. I do this as a hobby. I have put in a minimal amount of money. So I've done no soundproofing to my room, but I have just found a small room that does not echo. It's my bedroom. Uh, I was thinking about, oh, I could put some blankets up on the walls and stuff. That would stop any echo. I paid 70 bucks for the microphone. It's in front of me. I paid 30 bucks for the arm. So that's 100 bucks for this setup. I paid, I think, again, 70 or 80 bucks for the video camera that I'm using. Uh, and then the computer, but the computer I had already. So I spent $200, and this is the sound quality you're getting. This dipshit over here works for Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, one of the richest companies on the planet. He, I guarantee, makes a sum of money significantly higher than my own, and this is the fucking audio quality we're getting? You couldn't, you know, get yourself in a room or put up some, like you just put up some blankets that'll soundproof the room, or pillows. I mean, you don't need to do much. Get a fucking lapel mic. I have those. Here you go. Dude, I will lend them to you next time. Just call me. This is offensive. It's offensive. I am now offended if anything I do sounds better than someone who's getting paid to do it gets. Because if you're getting paid, there should be a base expectation that you do better than me. And if you're not doing better than me, and this audio on this clip right here is not doing better than me, go fuck yourself and you should be fired. Uh, I think all of Instagram should be shut down now. Let, let's continue with the uh, interesting piece of information. The other feature is something that we call Raid Shake. You ever use Instagram and it just wasn't working like it was supposed to? So this is called Rage Shake. Now I can tell you there's a word in there that I don't think is appropriate for when your uh, app bugs out. And you should not be encouraging people to uh, sort of attempt this kind of behavior when an app bugs out. But let's, let's let him continue. Maybe he has a valid point in there somewhere. Maybe stories didn't load, maybe the audio wasn't working, maybe you just couldn't upload a photo and it was just really getting you, really just pissing you off. Well now, you can literally shake the phone and a little option will come up that allows you to report a problem. So here's the thing. The way he shook his phone, because I know this is a primarily audio format. There are people who will watch the video, but this is primarily audio format. He folk it, he, he folk it. <laughs> he shook it really gently. He took his phone and he shook it and it was like a, a little waggle of the phone. That is not rage shake. So it should be shake to report or shake something like this. The rage shake implies a certain thing that people are actually going to do, which is going to mess up people's phones. But let's keep going. And you can explain exactly what happened, how you ended up in that place and all of the emotions and feels that you've got going on. Here's a, here's a set of things that I do not want. Uh, when someone's unable to upload their booty pic uh, and then has just shook their phone, I don't really want to know their emotions. Like what the bug report, uh, what happened, what, what was going on, what did you do? That's valuable information. How you feel about it is not. And again, I would not encourage people to A, shake their phone in anger. And I would certainly, certainly never encourage people to send me how they were feeling the moment uh, they had this incident occur. Because the one thing I don't want, I've realized very often in my life, the one thing I do not want is other people's emotions in my life. I'm now thinking of all the other the times it has happened and made me incredibly uncomfortable. I'm not good with feelings. I only have like four. Uh, and again, I just believe they're chemicals, so whatever. Uh, when someone else is trying to share their feelings with me, uh, I struggle. I know what I'm supposed to do and I know what I want to do. And I, I struggle to actually achieve those things. That's actually the problem I think I run into the most. It's almost like I'm one step back from my actual physical self 
wondering more how I can get out of this than how I could actually help the person. And going like part of me goes, I should you know, reach out and tap their shoulder, as I've seen them do on TV, in a friendly gesture of it will be all right. But then my brain also goes, you don't do that. Don't touch someone else. Uh, that's wrong. So what is going to happen now? I'm going to use Instagram because I do upload clips to Instagram on occasion. And something's going to go wrong and I'm going to shake my phone and I'm just going to talk about how I feel. I'm not going to give them any technical specs or anything at all. This is going to be like how I feel in this moment and how Instagram has kind of ruined my life. And we'll have someone actually take a look at it and this will help. Uh, again, I actually don't believe that second part. They're going to have someone actually look at every individual complaint. And you're going to get, you got to understand the user base of Instagram. Uh, is a lot of very self-centered people who would demand to see the manager given the opportunity. So I think that this invitation is also a mistake. I think someone maybe should have scripted this out a little better with our, our gentleman friend here who's actually making this announcement. Who is he? Uh, Adam Morris Moseri. Adam Mosseri, I assume he works for Instagram in some very important role, uh, but apparently Instagram doesn't pay enough, pay well enough for you to get fucking good audio equipment. Help us prioritize bugs and other things to fix in the Instagram app, and we appreciate the feedback. It's colorful. He's got a fucking gold watch on. <laughs> uh, like solid gold. I can't tell if it's a Rolex, but it's up there. So he's got enough money to buy a Rolex watch, like a four or $5,000 watch minimum, but he can't buy himself. He's got a mic in the background I can see now that I'm looking at it. He's got like a Yeti thing. Why isn't he using that? I think it might be echoing off the wall back to that microphone. The light's on. Sorry. Uh, again, I wouldn't actually even call myself like an audio nerd. I just now have realized, like basically... In all things that I do hobby-wise, I consider myself the base minimum. And if you don't do better than that, I really believe you fucked up. Because I, like, I try, but I don't try that hard. I mean, you've probably already figured that part out yourself just by listening to the podcast. Well, as it might be. So I please encourage you to do that. Raycheck is on iOS and Android, only in the U.S. to start. And the ability to delete one photo out of a carousel is... On I, I don't care about that other stuff. So you can delete one image if you've uploaded a bunch of images. That's a nice idea. Uh, but shaking your phone. The other thing that they didn't mention is people just jacking their phone as hard as they can are absolutely going to send that phone flying out of their hands into someone else. Who's responsible for that? Because the app has actually told me to shake my phone. If I lose control of my phone and it hits someone else, is it my fault for shaking the phone or is it Instagram's fault for telling me to do that in the first place? I'm going to wait for the lawsuit and see what happens. Here's a great piece of dumbassery. Uh, conservative MP Nick Fletcher, best known for being a really bad about trying to fake visit his own constituents. Uh, that's a different story, but I'm not going to click on it right now. Recently led a parliamentary, parliamentary debate for the International Men's Day. I talked about International Men's Day, I think, on the uh, last um, Philosophy Podcast episode where I was talking about how, you know, it, it's about equality and, and true equality and, and people actually like trying to uh, lift women up and without pushing men down and actually dealing with men's issues sensibly. This undermines that kind of shit. I was trying to be really sincere and I think this undermines it right away because you'll end up hating this guy for being a man. Uh, advocate for better mental health support for men. Roughly three quarters of the people who died by suicide in the UK in 2020 were male or anything actually useful instead of being a cudgel used by clueless people to complain when it's International Women's Day. Instead, Fletcher took the chance to rail against these so-called woke initiatives, which again, yeah, I agree this is stupid. Perceived existence of toxic masculinity, which I, again, I am a part of. I grew up in it. I believe it's a thing. Uh, I actually believe part of it has a role in society, but we have to uh, balance it and manage it. And the greatest that threat facing every single man in Britain today, Jodie Whittaker, a woman, being Doctor Who. So every male character or good role model must have a female replacement, and it's not just James Bond. So there was a story a while ago about uh, the, this was going to be the last Daniel Craig James Bond movie, and the next James Bond was going to be someone else. And everyone went to Idris Elba, which would have been great, uh, 
10 years ago because they want to do like a franchise. They want to do multiple films with the, the next James Bond. He's a bit old. So he's I think he's getting closer in his 50s or 60s, which means he's going to be 60s, 70s when they get to that last movie. It's not really a feasible thing anymore. When I've always enjoyed, because they're fictional characters, I've always enjoyed flipping them. So when they made... My favorite one so far has been Miles Morales. When they made Spider-Man a little half Mexican, half black kid. Uh, and then the fans of Spider-Man went apeshit. I loved it. I could not get enough. Peter Parker is Spider-Man and Peter Parker's white. But Peter Parker's not real. So is he? Because I actually, if I had been in control of this, I would have had him be Peter Parker and just changed him to a little black Mexican kid. I would have kept the name. I wouldn't have changed it to Ben. I would have done anything else. I would have been Peter Parker is now a black Mexican kid. And we're going to sort of reboot the series. And they just would have lost their minds because it's Peter's a white name or some shit like that. It would have been ridiculous and funny. When they made Thor a woman, I was 100% on board. I think they should do that. I think they should do runs of characters and just mess with everything about them because that's the whole point of playing with fiction. This guy, obviously a moron, uh, is taking it seriously. Is it any wonder we are seeing so many young men committing crime? So basically because there are no strong, heroic, male, and I assume white, role models, young men commit crime. I think despite the fact that young men have been committing most of the crime throughout of all of history. I, I don't have a, a stat for that, but if I was going to take a shot in the dark, I would bet most crime is committed by young men. Everywhere, not at least within the cultural sphere, there seems to be a call from a tiny but very vocal minority that make every male character or good role model that must have a female replacement. One only needs to look at the discussions about who will play the next James Bond, and it's not just James Bond. In recent years, we've seen Doctor Who, Ghostbusters, Luke Skywalker, The Equalizer, all replaced by women. Uh, Doctor Who... She's actually quite a good Doctor Who. If I'm like I'm, I'm a sort of a fan of science fiction. I, I'm sure that's going across. I actually think the writing has suffered a lot in the last couple of series, where now it basically doesn't make any sense. I have lost interest in Doctor Who, not because it was a woman. I've lost interest because the writing has gotten poor. Uh, Ghostbusters, the reboot, I uh, was not a fan. Uh, I wasn't didn't really care about the original Ghostbusters either. Either Luke Skywalker has been replaced by a woman? I don't know that story. I don't know where that came from. The Equalizer, I realize, is now on a, a TV show with Queen Latifah. And I was going to watch it and then didn't. And it's not because Queen Latifah's in it. I'm just like, ah, The Equalizer was just a mediocre show at best in, the, in the, the beginning. And I'm sure an update to it has not done it any favors. Men are left with the craze and Tommy Shelby. So criminals. Fletcher continued referring to presumably the 2015 Hardy movie Legend about the criminal Cray twins. Uh, and a BBC period crime drama, crime drama, Peaky Blinders, revolving around the crime families from 1900s Birmingham. Is there any wonder why we are seeing so many young men committing crime? Again, a stat there would change this whole discussion. Is that accurate? Is that true? Has it changed from before? I bet before it was all young men committing crimes. I bet it's still young men committing crimes. Shut up. Is probably what I actually want to say to this guy. So then he comes out, of course, like everyone does. Everyone, of course, now is saying, this dude's an idiot, and his argument's like pathetic, just like I just did. He comes out and he says, I did not link a Doctor Who being female to crime being committed by men, which is exactly what he did. Despite being... <laughs> In fact, I was making a statement that boys and young men also need positive role models within media, just as women do. It's, it's, I think the thing is, this is only a problem for older men who care about these things so they've failed to understand they define themselves by these things in such a way that they become important and you have to realize that fiction should never be important it should be educational it should be entertaining it should be fascinating it should be thrilling uh, it should maybe try to expand the boundaries of your thought process and that last one is actually really important if it does those things it's good it's an important in a way, but it's never going to be important because it is just fiction. Uh, it's like a book. People say books are important, and I don't subscribe to that because books are just made up. Movies are not important because they're just made up. Comic books and characters are just made up. And if you are saying that the authors, the creators, are not allowed to play with those concepts and ideas, then you're actually saying that fiction is not 
like it has its own rules, which is the whole point of fiction is supposed to be trying to break rules. It becomes important when it expands your ability to think, but the only way to expand the ability to think or your thought process is to try to do something you wouldn't have thought of or try to change things in a way to give you a different perspective or try to open your mind in some way to something you hadn't considered before. So making Spider-Man a half black, half Mexican kid is pretty awesome because you're now going to think about Spider-Man in a different context. Making Thor a woman is going to make you think about Thor in a different context. It's going to give the writers more things to explore. Uh, there was the one where uh, Superman landed in Russia. That's cool. That gives us a whole thing. Like, what if he wasn't protecting America and the American ideals and the American way of life? What if he was doing the Russian ideals and the Russian way of life and all that stuff? What if he was loyal to where he landed? That changes the character. What happens then? And that would give you stuff to think about. And that's really, as we get to the last few episodes of The Lost Podcast, what I ever wanted to achieve and what I try to do all the time is to just have stuff to think about. So please think about stuff. The loss of 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 podcast. The loss of podcast. Hey, sexy friend. He's making me his bitch. Maybe you want to get a piece of that. Pretty good. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe on iTunes, Google, Spotify, or anywhere you get podcasts. You can also watch on YouTube slash Podcast or streaming on twitch.tv slash chunkmcbeefjest. You can find Ninja News Japan on Facebook. Send questions or comments to speakpipe.com slash velocipodcast. Link in the description. Check out all the podcasts in the Velocipodcast family. See McBee, Ninja News Japan and Daily Affirmations Weekly.how do you feel about this podcast? Do you think those feelings are real? Did you have a choice? Are they just the chemicals in your brain at work? Because they are, but there may be more. There is something you can think about. Next time you are in a bad mood, don't lash out at anyone, don't blame anyone, just try and balance out those chemicals. This is how you can take control of your future.